this video we're going to be taking this Omega power supply and this Meanwell power supply and joining them together. This is a Meanwell RT65B which is uh, 100 to 240 volts input and outputs 5.0 volts at 5 amps, 12 volts at 2.8 amps and minus 12 volts at 1.5 amps, which is ample for any Amiga and anything that we're going to plug into it in terms of add-ons and upgrades and so on. So this will become the power supply of the Amiga and any Amiga and well at least any Amiga with the square connector. Now you can put in an RT50B which is this um, 50 watt version of this. This is a 65 so it's a 65 watts. But the 50 watt, the RT50s are very, very hard to get hold of at the moment. So this was available and like capacitors, it's better to go slightly over than slightly under. So we've got one of these. It should still fit just about inside here. There's about a one millimeter difference in the width of this compared to the RT50, the RT50 is less long, but the length I don't think is uh, particularly important. We're also going to replace the plug because this is a pretty manky plug that it came with. And I've got a brand new, uh, this is a 13 amp plug, but we've got some 3 amp fuses for it, or at least a 3 amp fuse, which will be ample enough. So let's crack this bad boy open. We're going to keep the wires and the cables, uh, but let's check now if this is going to go in. So that's the main side, which has got this barrier. No, it's not. not no it's not we are going to have to go with plan B that's not going to fit at all that's not going to fit at all huh. so much for that okay plan B is we are going to print on the 3d printer which is behind me under this plastic a brand new case to fit the RD65B because it does not go in here. We're still going to use the same cables but we'll basically just junk this power supply. Those capacitors look okay-ish. We did have a dead capacitor in the Amiga which was across the plus 12 volts output so I don't know what caused it but I'm going to be suspicious of the power supply. So even though we measured the correct voltages on it, I'm basically not going to use it. Right. I have got the plans from Thingiverse for a box to put it in. So let's go and print it out. The files on Thingiverse are actually for a PT45 power supply. So I'm going to have to enlarge it for the RT65B. Normally you'd do this in something like Fusion 360 or SolidWorks. But I'm doing it in Maya because that's what I use in my day job. It's what I have and it's what I know. This design consists of two parts, top and bottom. We need to make the case longer and a little wider. I'm also going to add a hole for a fuse holder and some internal supports to hold the mean weld steady.
Once the changes are done, we can export the parts as STL files, ready for slicing in Cura. Cura is a 3D slicer. It takes our STL file and slices it into very thin layers that the printer can print. The slicer outputs G-code, which you can think of as the three-dimensional equivalent of PostScript. And now we can print it out. Okay, so we've got our two halves of the power supply, which we don't need because that's the bottom. And the meanwhile does not fit. So you see, it's all right widthwise, which is actually what was worrying me, but it's lengthwise slightly too long we have got orange is the new retro this is uh, still sort of prototype so i need to uh, refine it a little bit more but it's going to be good enough for today so the meanwhile will go in this way like this and then this goes on the top on this side is a fuse and the main switch. There is a fuse on the board there, which is 400 milliamps. It's a 20 millimeter fuse. I've got some fuse holders here. That will fit into here, so we keep the fuse. Now, the meanwhile, I believe, has got internal fuses, but it's always better to have another fuse. So main switch and fuse on that side. On this side we've got cutouts for the cable and the design on Thingiverse is for a round grommet but these cables are square so I've adapted it again and this will take the square grommet which is a 10 mil cutout. Okay so before we start fitting that let's take a look at this we can reuse these cables which is handy because I don't really want to go wiring up another one of these because I don't have another one of these and we definitely need to keep this. This I'm going to put a new a new plug on here because uh, goodness knows where, where this plug has come from uh, and what fuse is in it. Take the plug apart Okay, that looks like it's a 13 amp fuse. That's no good, we want a three amp fuse in that. Now this cable is very, very grubby. So I'm going to spend some time cleaning that up. It certainly seems to be getting the dirt off. At least it's getting plenty of dirt onto the blue roll. Now you don't need to watch me doing this, so we'll come back in a moment when it's all done. Okay, that's done. So you can see how much grot there was on that. I've also coiled up these cables just for uh, ease of dealing with. Now, first thing I think we want to do is put, no, we're not gonna put the plug on, we're going to cut these off. Okay, so the way we're going to wire this is the mains will come in and the neutral will go to the neutral terminal and the live will go all the way across to the other side to the switch and then the switch will go to the fuse and then that will come all the way back to the live and then we've got ground which is connected to earth and on the output side we've got plus 5 volts, plus V2, V3, common. And we can look on here and we can see exactly where they go. So the yellow one is common 
and that is connected to the big earth terminal. Plus 5 is going to be red, plus 12 is brown, and minus 12 is white. Okay, it's important to check these on the actual cable that you've got because they did change colours in different power supplies. So now we can get rid of this out of the way. The wires are not long enough to reach the other side of the box, so I've salvaged more wires from an old mains cable, which I'm using to extend them. Okay, now I'll come back and heat shrink that later, and we can do it all together. I've also salvaged the on-off switch from the old power supply, and we'll wire it up to the fuse holder. Put the heat shrink on first. Now we connect the mains wire to the switch. And bring a wire back from the other side of the fuse holder. That's all we need for the soldering, I do believe. One last step, and that's the heat shrink. And now we can wire in the mean well. Now we will attempt to put the lid on. This may not go so well. Right, it obviously needs another iteration of the 3D design because that's not going to shut. But, through the magic of 18 hours of reprinting in the background, we will cut shortly to the finished version, which may be a different colour. Today we're going to be fitting this Meanwell RT65B power supply into this 3D printed case. This time I've put the fuse holder in the bottom half of the box. It's much more sensible. Let's quickly reassemble it all. There we are, one power supply. Let's check the voltages. So we know from the bottom of the original power supply what pin goes to what voltage. Let's switch it on and see if it goes bang. Nope, that's a good start. Okay, so the first pin 
is to the bottom corner and this should be 5 volts switch to volts so, top right to bottom right Five point one volts. Whoops. Top right to middle. Minus twelve volts. Yes. Top right to top left. Eleven point seven three, that's plus twelve. Five point one, yeah, that's fine. Okay, and it's not getting warm, so that's good. So there we have one Amiga power supply, Meanwell type. And it weighs an awful lot less than this old thing. Good. Let's try it out. Okay, we've got a disc to put in. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video please click the like button and please subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you next time. See ya!